This is exhausting work. Haha. <laughs> We're getting down to the final point. I know it's been a long journey. The exhaust kit was on back order for over a month from one company. I called them up. The guy's like, yeah, it's been on back order since October, and we don't know when the parts are coming in. And this is in December. I'm like, well, can you give me a hint? And he's like, nope. So I called back the next day because I found another supplier. I'm like, hey, just cancel my order. And then the guy's like, well, you know, uh, the stuff's coming in the end of the week, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you didn't tell me that yesterday. You said you didn't know when it was coming in. So then he got all freaking froggy. He's like, well, good luck finding it somewhere else. I'm like, all right. So I canceled that order, called, a, emailed another place, and they're like, yeah, we got it in stock. It's $10 cheaper, and we can ship it today. I'm like, oh, score. So I switched it, and it showed up, and we put it in. All right, this is what the exhaust kit consists of. This is a Class 3 stainless steel gasketed uh, Z-Vent system for a forced exhaust heater. With this pipe, you've got a, a single wall stainless steel pipe. And then inside, where the connections come together, there's a probably neoprene or some kind of high temperature rubber gasket that seals, seals the pipe. When you put it together, it seals the system up. This is the appliance adapter for the heater. It's got an O-ring gasket on this side, which goes onto the back of the heater unit. And then the, uh, the double O-ring, which slides on the exhaust. So I've got that. I've got this three inch, three foot pipe. They'll be going off the uh, adapter through the wall. This is the uh, wall thimble. This is the, uh, the inside. It's got a bracket for a hose clamp to go around the pipe once you get it installed. And then the, uh, the outside of the pipe is here. So the way this works is a uh, piece is collapsible so you can adjust it to the width of your wall. I've got a two by six wall plus uh, We'll say uh, three quarter and three quarter uh, for siding. So you, you put in there, and it'll slide up and down to the width of your wall. You know, this way. So this gives you your air gap all the way around. And uh, this is all stainless steel. This kit is all stainless. And uh, this is the termination pipe for outside. It goes uh, like this horizontally, and it's got a a baffle and a piece of screen and it, and it exhausts out both sides so it'll be mounted like this straight out the, the wall and uh, also all stainless steel uh, you need this uh, you need this class 3 uh, z-vent pipe for this forced exhaust unit heater because it won't allow any exhaust gases to seep, to seep out of joints in the pipe inside the building all right so with the uh with the appliance adapter mounted here on the back of the the three inch outlet what i want to do is take uh the best thing i found to line this up is i took the extension off my shop back and i can go over here to the wall and it'll it'll sit square to the wall because of the edge and i just kind of center it up in my exhaust hole here and i can get the exact placement where the stack wants to be i'm gonna go ahead and make a mark So that should be the exact location we're going to come through. Now this is just loose on my brackets. <clears throat> I'm going to want the exhaust pipe running downhill like a quarter inch or so for condensation to run out of. Um, so if I set this up straight now, when I draw the brackets up, it'll pick the heater up about half an inch or so, and that'll give me the pitch on my pipe going out through the wall that I need. So I'm just going to eyeball the hole through there. Check the four corners. Now we're not going to cut on the line because obviously you need some wall to mount this to. Probably want to leave, I don't know, like cut like an inch inside this line. So I'm going to get a one inch scale. I'm going to scale around it with a one inch scale. Got this one inch steel scale. Take this gas line out of the way. Actually, I'll leave it on there to keep the pipe so it doesn't get dirt in it. Spin it out of the way. Just 
bump the lines in an inch. There, now I got my mark where I can saw cut. My saver saw doesn't have any blades, so I'm going to use a circular saw instead. If I can get in here. I'm talking about. So now I got my outside wall. I can get a long drill bit. I can go straight here and uh, hopefully I can make a square hole or get a couple of little pilot holes and then I can go outside and put the piece on the outside and cut it, cut it there. All right, that'll give me four rough holes to line this up outside. Okay, I'm outside here. I'm gonna take this uh, piece, line it up with the uh, holes I drilled from the inside, like a so. Square it up. I'm gonna draw around this. that. Now that doesn't help me still, but dang. Right about there. Oh, that, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and step in the inch just like on the inside and we'll saw this out. So let me uh, use this as a template. Just like a so. Yeah, that'll give me a pretty good opening.
if I can get the wooden plugs out of this hole saw, I could hole saw the rest of this. Chance that's slim to none. Aha! There we go. Now, this will go right here. I'm gonna punch some holes in it to screw it, and then we'll put a bead of silicone around it when it's sealed up the right way, but there's your wall thimble. Actually, I'm gonna box here. I'm gonna put a two by six all the way around just to hold the insulation back and to box this in. So I'm looking right at the back of the heater right now. There it is right there. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the piece of pipe and I'll stick it in here and see how we look. All right, I cut some blocking. I'm gonna go ahead and block up this hole block this in so hold the insulation from falling around here you can see how that's boxed in nice 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 with some two by sixes that'll keep the insulation away so let's go ahead and monkey around with the pipe I could take the uh, the exhaust adapter from the unit here it's gonna go onto the exhaust of the unit Press onto the O-ring. I know my head's in the way, but... I'm gonna go ahead and land this first. It's locked on there nice. I've also mounted the heater tight to the ceiling because I had it loose before. It's tight now. You can, you can see there's a gap around the around here, so I'm putting that on the inside. Run this out. And this is going to push in all the way almost to this beveled line. I just want to check check this. Yes, yeah, it's going to be good. So what I'm going to do is dimple. I'm going to punch some holes in my inner piece. And I'm going to get this screwed to the wall like this, and then we'll land the pipe, and then uh, slip on the outside of this of the uh, thimble, and then put the exhaust cap on. I took a simple uh, punch, and I punched some dimples in here so I could start some screws. Uh, I got some uh, wood screws; uh, they're for metal roofing, but they'll they'll bite into this real good. So I'm going to use these. I also have uh, some high temperature silicone for HVAC. Here, I'm going to put a bead around the uh, inside of this plate so I got a seal to the wall. Go ahead and uh, apply that now. Go and uh, screw this into place. I checked the pipe fitment where I got my mark here, should be good, so I should be able to screw it right with my marks. A nice silicone seal. I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and uh, put the outside piece on and we'll stick the pipe in. I'm gonna leave the camera here because it's a pain to set it up on top of my junkyard out there. So I'll go ahead and screw the outside piece on and I'll be right back. All right, I screwed the outside of the, the wall uh, thimble on. And I've also, when I was out there, I pushed the pipe to home, which is, you can see here on this line, pushed it to home. It's tightened up on the furnace. I tightened it up just now on the uh, 
the hose clamp here. Now I've got another hose clamp that comes with the kit. It goes through these tails on the wall, and the wall then will lock that together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on right now, and then uh, we'll go outside and put the termination cap on. All right, got that clamp locked down nice. Oh yeah, it's nice and solid now. So this is all terminated good here. We got a uh, We got like an eighth inch, eighth inch of fall here. So over the three feet of through, it's going to be almost four feet of this pipe. I'll probably have a quarter inch fall, which the directions call for. So we got eighth inch fall so far. So that's good. We've got a good air gap here around. So we'll go outside. We'll put the termination cap on. We'll seal around the outside with silicone, and the exhaust installation will be complete. Alright, this is like super sketchy out here because we're in the sun and I'm on top of a bunch of junk on top of a ladder. So I got the pipe mount, I got the flange mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate this by placing it in here and then pressing it until I get to the uh, ring. Oh! What the hell was that? Uh oh. Hell nuts. Just popped a weld on that. To take that inside and weld it up. I'll be right back. Alright, so I welded up that. So now we'll go ahead and try it again. Alright, that's homed out. My level here. Looks good. There we go. So we got a nice gap away from the wall. It's probably about uh, 18, 20 inches. The exhaust comes out both sides of this. The rain stays out. There's a screen in here to keep critters out. So the last step I'm going to do out here is going to take the silicone and I'm going to silicone around this to seal it up. I siliconed around the back side of this too when I put it on and I filled in where this T111 is. I gap, filled that gap in and sloped it so the water will run out so none will get in here. This will set up. A nice fat gap of silicone all the way around. So that completes the uh, the outside installation. Ah. Got an ample gap to our uh, lean-to. Got plenty of gap away from the wall. This thing should vent in the west winds here, so it should disperse this just fine. And uh, that's it. Here's a look at it from the ground. Here's my lean-to roof, the back of my other roof. I didn't show over the outside before, but here's the gas line coming through the wall. I'm going to put a 90 on this and come over to the edge of the building. And then I've got my pad I've been working on through the winter here uh, to set the vertical tank on. I've got a, a stone pad with two 2x2 uh, two two pavers. And i got to do a little bit more filling around it, but this is the first time the snow has been off the ground for a while. So I'll keep working on this and hopefully get a propane tank soon. But So here's the extension pipe I made. came out here with a 90 off and then an 18-inch piece of pipe with a bracket. That's a temporary cap. <clears throat> All right, so now with the exhaust done, I was able to put the gas back together. Um, you know, I showed you all this put together before, but what I did is... With exhaust, there wasn't any way to spin this around, so I added a union here. So in the future, I can just take the union apart, take all this gas off, leave the uh, the long nipple in the in the heater. So uh, I've got a hanger from the ceiling. This is nice and secure. So what I'm going to do now is hook up the flexible whip connection for the gas, and then the the gas will be complete. I've got a gauge here that I found in a, some stuff I bought a while ago at a, at a garage sale. It reads the inches of water column, and this heater runs at about 11, so it's it's be nice to have a gauge on here. Um, 
So I'll go ahead and tape this down. Now all the gas is complete. I hooked up the outside pipe there. Uh, you know, well you saw that. So the only problem now is I don't have any propane because it's winter. It's hard to get the propane tank out where the uh, where it needs to go, and because it's been so cold, the prices have skyrocketed. So I can't gas this up yet. But I'm, what I am going to do is air test it to like probably 25 pounds and check for leaks with air. And then let that out, and I'm just gonna have to wait till I can afford to buy some propane and get the tank set up to, to test this. So what I got from before is my uh, my dedicated circuit. I got a 20 amp dedicated circuit here. So I got an MC cable. I'm just gonna bring it in this hole, which I think the uh, the thing I'll hook right into. That's gone forever. And this is simple, simple, straightforward white to white and black to black and green to ground. There you go. And we got the ground here. So I'll get ahead and I'll zip tie these wires up here, and then the thermostat wire lands on here yellow, green, wire, white, red, and common. So what I'm going to do with the thermostat wire is it uses all four colors, white, green, and red, and then the blue is the common, I guess, because um, it calls for heat and fan separately sometimes. So I'm simply just going to zip tie it through here along the wall, and I've got this conduit here that runs all the way back to where I want to put the thermostat, and I'm just going to zip tie it to this conduit all the way around the garage. So I've already got it stubbed into the heater here and strip back um, so I can go ahead and land it on the terminals and then I'll run it around the garage and get it where I want it and I'll go get the thermostat when it comes in I'll get one So now I'll just go and I'll run the wire around the garage. And uh, I think if I get that done, the next step is to air test the line and make sure there's no leaks. But You get the idea. I'm going to keep running over there and then uh, we'll go from there. Probably stick this back on here. Bink. Yes, look, look, I am your father. Come to the dark side of the force. I'm crapping away here for 10 minutes. Why is everything in the way?